So for this problem, we're going to look at just some of the basics of the arithmetic and logic unit of a basic CPU. So this is a problem from uh, the fall 2023 quiz 10. Um, so fall 2023 quiz 10. So the problem that was presented was you were asked to just provide a sketch of a, of a one-bit ALU, and it needed to perform the basic functions that um, are studied when we look at the MIPS processor and, and the CPU data path. So it asks you to provide a one-bit ALU that performs the and, or, add, subtract, um, subtract and set on less than, and then the NAND and the NOR. So, for this ALU, this simple ALU, there's going to be a multiplexer that has two bits. And these two bits here, um, right, it'll be 0, 0, 0, 1, um, 2. And depending on which one of those combinations are presented, to the multiplexer, it's going to allow one of four inputs to come through for the output. So this here then is the ALU output. So this ALU acts as a switch where it either allows input zero, input one, input two, or input three. One of those will come through. Which one comes through it depends on um, the two bits that are selected. So if you just simply wanted to get the output of two bits that are anded together, you would um, use these two bits and select them to um, zero zero. If you wanted to look at the result of oring two bits, You'd get this. Um, you'd select it from um, input number one. And if you wanted the result of adding two bits together, and so in adding those two bits, you would get something like this. Now, with those two bits, um, typically when you're adding, say, two bits together, it's fairly straightforward. Zero and one might be a one, and then a one and a one would be a two. So let's say we add these two bits. Zero and one give us the one. One and a one give us the two. So there's the zero, and then carry the one out here and carry it in here. So one and one is a two. And let's do this, add a few more bits here. So zero and one give us the one, one and one give us the two, that one is carried out, comes in here, one and zero. There's a carry in. And so those two bits, we'll also see a carry in, which adds up to two, one, zero, zero. So the one here is carried in, nothing is carried out. And um, and so forth. So when you're working with two bits at a time, you may have a carry in and also a carry out to the next bit. So when we're looking at an ALU, you're going to see that we're just looking at one block, but this one block is one of possibly 32. So if it's a 32-bit ALU, then this is going to go on down until we get to 32 bits altogether. And any time, and so each one of those ALUs is working with only a sync, just two bits at a time, essentially. Um, but when it comes to addition and subtraction, there is a carry in and a carry out that ripples out and continues onward. Um, into the next subsequent block or ALU, arithmetic and logic unit. 
Um, so when it comes to working with the um, the anding of two bits, right? So we'll take maybe those two, but if we wish to accept the or of those two bits, then we would make sure that we select um, the right two-bit combination properly, uh, properly for the LU, or the multiplexer, right? This is our multiplexer that we're looking at here. Um, and then this continues on. Uh, this adder here has the um, has two bits that could possibly come into it. And there. So that is our block ALU. Two bits coming in and an answer that comes out. But there also could be a carry in and a carry out. Um, so internal to that is the multiplexer that is switching between four different outputs. And then this set on less than is um, another input that generally is a zero for 31 of those um, blocks. But for the least significant one, it is really just looking at the internal most um, significant bit to determine if it's negative. And so when we're looking at a 32-bit ALU, we're going to look at the most significant bit to determine if it's negative and use that most significant bit um, to pull him out and bring him all the way around and have him represent it as part of the answer. So that most significant bit will be pulled out so that when we do a subtraction, for example, if we do something like a 3 minus a 5, the result would be a negative 2. And since it's a negative 2, um, that most significant bit would be a 1. So whenever we end up with a negative result, when we're doing a set on less than, right? The set on less than is essentially doing a subtraction. And in that subtraction, um, we want to look at the most significant bit of the 32-bit result and pull him out and around into the least significant bit and present him as an answer so that the answer is a 1 for the least significant bit and then zeros elsewhere. So if you call with MIPS, that's how that worked. When you said set on less than and it would set maybe register T0 to either a 0 um, or a 1 based on the result of subtracting, say, T1 and T2 registers. And if T1 was less than T2, right? So you might have three being less than five. Set on less than does the subtraction, looks to see if it's a negative result, and shows that as with an output being a one, and that one is fed back in to register T0 or that first um, register. So this is the set on less than input. Generally it's zero except for the least significant bit. So now for the other pins, it's just simply two bits, right? We're going to have bits A and B. In order to expand the functionality, instead of just calling it A and B, let's put our A here and our B here. And to give ourselves the opportunity to not just select A or B, but maybe we want the inverted form of A. So A complement could come through. So if I want the inverted form, I'll set this to be true. A invert would be a one, and it would take from that side. So I'll put a zero and a one to indicate which 
um, of the two inputs I'm selecting. If I want it to be invert, I would have another controller, a control pin here, um, B invert that would select um, the inverted form of the input. So those two pins, right, A invert and B invert, give us the option of selecting inverted forms of the inputs.
simple layout. 